is going off by fans what an amazing performance by Devin Haney he went in there and put on a, a spectacular showing as to why he's at the level that he is why he's the youngest undisputed champion he proved it to me when he went ahead and fought Lomachenko even though he technically didn't have to because he felt that his win versus Cambosis wasn't wasn't really sure he took it from Cambosis but I felt that the world felt that that was the easiest route to undisputed that you could find uh considering but but then he decided to fight Lomachenko and I thought that that was very very telling of his character because he wanted to show that the guy that basically collected all of the belts I can beat him too and although it was a tough fight it was a close fight that could have gone either way and it went his way so he earned that decision but then we fast forward to yesterday when he fought Regis Progre and my goodness a lot of things come into question for me how drained is Devin Haney really at 135? Because one, he was already talking about moving up to 147 to fight for another world title and become a three-division world champion even before he stepped foot in a 140-pound bout against Regis Progre. He didn't have a tune-up fight. He went right for a world title immediately and he made Regis Progre look like an amateur now let's look at the compu box numbers for his fight with regis progray because it's actually astonishing if you're wondering if this fight was better than his performance with george cambosis jr it was by a lot as george cambosis jr was able to land 24 percent of his punches and regis progray was only able to land 9.9 percent of his punches on devin haney Devin Haney completely shut out Regis Progre. And as I was watching the fight, and we were live here on Boxing Fanatico, around the ninth round or 10th round, I called it and said, well, this is a 120-107 performance. The, they're going to do 120-107. Normally, it's 120-108, but there was a knockdown in one of the earlier rounds. So it was basically a 120-107 performance. And when they got to the scorecards, all three judges had it identical, 120-107. That was pitching a perfect shutout. The man didn't touch first base in the, in the boxing sense. Every single judge gave every single round to Devin Haney, period. And that was the that was it that was the end of it. There was nothing else that George Camp that uh, Regis Progre was able to do in any of the rounds from the starting bell to the final bell. Now, if we look at the numbers, these are crazy numbers. Uh, Regis Progre in the fourth round landed two punches. In the fifth round landed two punches. In the sixth round landed three punches. In the seventh round two punches. In the eighth round two punches. In the tenth round two punches. In the eleventh round two punches. That's one. Actually and in the third round three punches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds where he doesn't go above three punches. And then all the other ones, round one is five punches landed, round two is five punches landed, uh, round 12 is four punches landed, and round nine is four punches landed. So he's not even that far away uh, from where, where, where he didn't land more than three uh, punches. It's still right there. It's like two more punches max. He didn't land more than five punches in any of the rounds. Devin Haney... Like the 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 distance between the amount of punches landed in the eighth round, fifteen punches landed by Devin Haney to just two punches landed by uh, by Regis Progray. That's insane, insane. Regis Progray barely landed the jab. Regis Progray landed five jabs the entire fight. Five jabs the entire fight. He left Regis Progray to a 9.9% connect 
rate, while Devin Haney had a 35.1% connect rate. Now, if this ever brought into question who has the highest plus minus in this his, in this sports history, um, no matter how crazy this sounds and how crazy this is, it actually isn't the greatest plus minus in the sports history. This performance puts Devin Haney at a 25.2 plus minus. Now, plus minus simply just takes the amount of punches you landed and 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 missed, so the percentage of your punches landed versus your opponent's percentage of their punches landed and then you minus that and that gives you the plus minus the greatest plus minus of all time in the history of the sport which should bring into should bring this person further into understanding his legendary status was floyd mayweather versus marquez floyd mayweather landed nearly half of his punches but he threw around 500 punches right way more more punches he threw more punches than almost both of them combined and Juan Manuel Marquez threw almost 600 punches in that fight but he barely landed so the percentage gap was massive Floyd throwing almost 500 punches and landing half of that while uh, Juan Manuel Marquez throwing almost uh, 600 punches but barely landing any of it the percentage gap was so wide that uh, Floyd ended up having a plus minus of 47 that to this day on CompuBox record has not even been close. It's not even close. It's not been reached. And you you, you saw that fight. You saw the, the gap and how much, you know, Regis Progray was not landing and Devin Haney was dominating. And it was still a 25.2 uh, plus minus. So just a little caveat for plus minuses if people were thinking about the advanced stats for plus minus when it comes to punches landed and a performance like that it brings into question what what are the best plus minus and to this day floyd still holds the best one uh, against juan manuel marquez with a plus 47 but that performance in my opinion it it, it really brings into question how tired Re, uh Devin haney truly was or how drained he truly was at 135 because at 140 he looked good he looked like he was energized his face everything it looked really comfortable in there that's not how he looked to me when he was fighting against Lomachenko heck that's not how he looked to me when he was fighting George Cambosis right as good as he did against George Cambosis it felt that there 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 looked like there was struggle there right with Linares with Jojo Diaz there looked like there was struggle there he, there was no struggle in terms of moving around and just being comfortable in there in that fight last night Devin Haney did his thing and now there is speculation uh that he's going to possibly fight Ryan Garcia I think that that is a great move don't move up to 147 Fight Ryan Garcia at 140. You could create, you could become a breakout star by fighting a Ryan Garcia and, and beating him. And then you could be lined up to fight a Tank Davis, right? A Tank Davis fight could become a super fight uh, if you fight a Ryan Garcia and you beat him. Because the pay-per-view numbers for that will be crazy, right? They'll do really, really well. And I definitely want to see what the pay-per-view numbers were for this fight. He did sell out the arena. Um, but I'm wondering how many people, how many people were willing to purchase the pay-per-view. Remember, there's a barrier to entry. You got to be a DAZN subscription, the uh, DAZN subscription member, and you know, pay for the pay-per-view. So it's not easy. Uh, and 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 the pay-per-view is not on regular cable pay-per-view. So it's not easy for the average person, uh, you know, for the casual market to break into to watch this pay-per-view but we're gonna we're gonna take a look at and see if if you know if they're able to uh generate some decent numbers um also we officially predicted the fight here on boxing fanatico and we talked about what Devin haney was going to be able to do now i did not think that he was going to do it to this great of a success but we did predict that he was going to work off the back foot he was going to make it uncomfortable, keep Regis Progray outside of the mid-range so he can't take uh, throw his one-shot bombs, which is what Regis Progray loves to do. He's an old-school type fighter. He likes to slip and shoot. 
Um, but he wasn't going to allow him to do that. Uh, he threw a lot of odd combinations that threw the whole slipping rhythm off for Regis Progre. And he dominated move, using going off the back foot. He dominated this fight uh, from the beginning belt to the end belt. And we predicted that he would win, and he did just that. And he did it in spectacular fashion. And it moves this channel um, up to an unprecedented 13 fight prediction streak. A streak that no one is even close to in, in, in content creation, social media, what have you. Even the mainstream media, nobody is close to a 13 fight prediction streak. This is just way too on the nose. We're killing it here uh, on Boxing Fanatico. All right, so amazing performance by Devin Haney. Love it, love it, love to see it. Copy box stats were crazy. Uh, just, you know, it, it's great for boxing. And if he decides to not move up to 147 and fight Terrence Crawford or Boots Ennis and end up fighting Ryan Garcia, I'm not mad at it because it's a breakout star performance uh, or fight that he can use as leverage to uh, then fight a tank davis all right guys until the next one i hope you guys enjoyed the fight thank you for all of you guys that came out to watch it here on our live commentary uh of the fight of course we'll be live on monday to talk about the fight with you guys as well as being live on wednesdays and fridays as we're always live mondays wednesdays fridays from 7 p.m eastern time to 8 p.m eastern time as we talk boxing with you so hit that subscribe button Hit that like button, and we'll see you on Monday. Peace out.